at any interior critical points. Um, so, you know, note f of minus 1 is e to the minus 1, right? Which is, of course, 1 over e. And f of 3 is e to the 9, which is pretty huge. I mean, odds are very high that that <laughs> is going to be the winner in terms of being the maximum, OK? Now, what's the FDX? So what we got here is we've got 2x e to the x squared by the chain rule. So what is the critical point? Is there a critical point? If we put that equal to 0, x equals to 0, only only critical number for this problem. So the only additional number we need to check for this example is f of 0. f of 0 then, what is f of 0? Well, f of 0 is e to the 0 squared, which is e to the 0, which is what? It's 1, right? So then to decide the min and max decide the min max from comparing f of minus 1 f of 0 and f of 3, right? Pretty clearly um, f of minus 1 equals to 1 over e is the minimum, and f of 3 equals e to the 9 is the maximum. So in this case, the interior critical point was just a, a local min or max, perhaps. Now, if you wanted to decide whether the interior point was a local minimum or a local maximum, then we could do further investigation, either, you know, first derivative test or take a der another derivative, find the second derivative and all that. But there's no need, if you're just asking the question, what's the minimum and the maximum of a continuous function on a closed interval, what you, got, what you want to do is find all the critical numbers, evaluate the function at those points, and then compare those values to the values of the function at the endpoints, and that's that's the closed interval test. What's the value of wrong, like the last time? Um, I think the first time, the first time through, um, you were just basically um, graphing it. You were looking at the first derivative and the second derivative, trying to define whether they were local minimums or local maximums, yeah. which is which is fine, but it doesn't answer the question. See, because there's it's not just f of x equals e to the x squared, graph it on all reals. It's f of x equals e to the x squared. And by the way, you're only allowed to look at minus 1 to 3. Yeah, so that's, that's it, the bounds are the different, why this problem is different than, okay. you know, if I was just to say graph this, um, uh, oh, wait a minute. I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. You, you let me get away with this. That doesn't make you an idiot. It just makes you, um, you should be more critical of me. <laughs> so, yeah, there's something wrong here. F of minus 1 is e to the minus 1. Is that how the formula works? Minus 1 squared, yes? Which is what? Just e to, e to the 1, right? So that's e. I think everything else is OK. But that is a pretty significant thing because that means that e is about, you know, 2.71-ish, right? So actually, this one was the minimum. That one was the minimum. So f of 0 equal to 1 is the minimum. And of course, that actually makes sense if you graph this thing, because the graph of this, roughly speaking, looks like this. That is a very crude approximation to this graph, but it's an even function, and the smallest it ever gets is 1. And it's like e to the x squared just keeps getting bigger and bigger this way. It keeps getting bigger and bigger that way. Either way you slice it, either way you go, 
um, it grows rather. And I know you can't tell the difference between this and my like parabola, but it is much, much steeper. It's fast, growing very, very fast um, in both directions. Although it's, I should say it's decreasing very fast for negative x because that's where this derivative is negative for negative x. But anyway, yeah, so, so we, can, we can review more of whatever you guys would like for the final. We have tons of time. Or we can review and focus on the test three material. It's like really up to you guys what you think is best for you overall. I mean, I want... Uh, Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But we'll, I'll give you guys a quiz. So um, remember I said next Tuesday I'm giving you guys a quiz that's like test three. So then, um, and um, maybe I'll just, I'll, I'll let, I'll give you guys, oh, I don't know, about let's say 45 minutes of class to do the quiz and then we'll spend the last half hour looking at the solution to the quiz. Okay, so we'll do that. Um, and then um, Wednesday, um, actually we'll have either a very, very short class or no class at all because I have a meeting to go to on Wednesday. Right. So you guys will have most of Wednesday just to study for the test, which is next Thursday. So, but. Uh, maybe you can attend no test at all. On Wednesday? Yeah. yeah, we can do that. We are pretty well up to date. And Tuesday we'll, Tuesday we'll have a pretty complete review for test three, so yeah. with the quiz and the review of the quiz.